Hi there, Chris here. I am the personal English trainer. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Take a look at this. Can you read this number? Think about it for a moment. I'll give you a few seconds. Get your pen, get your notebook, and let's get ready to study. Hit that intro. Okay, welcome back. Thanks very much for joining me for today's lesson. So, let's take a look at the lesson plan. Our goal is to read and understand numbers in English. Okay, the, it's for all levels, but especially students uh, lower and intermediate uh, and intermediate. But all students have trouble with numbers, so a little review will help everybody. Okay, first, uh, I will show you how easy it is to read large English numbers. There's just two key points you need to understand. Second, we will have a look at some unusual numbers such as uh, decimal points and prices and times and uh, some, other, some other things. Uh, we'll do a little quiz, a little quiz, and finally we'll finish with a few numbers idioms. Okay, so how do we read this number? Okay, one time. 10 trillion, 70 billion, 5 million, 900,024. Okay, one more time. 10 trillion, 70 billion, 5 million, 900,024. Now, in just a few minutes, you will be able to read all big numbers like this. You just need to know two points. Here we go. Point number one is groups of three. Point number two, understand the comma or the space. Okay, so these are the two things you must understand to read any number. Okay, the comma means these here, the commas in the number. Sometimes we just have spaces. Okay, so what do I mean by groups of three? Let's take a look at that. English numbers are always in groups of three. So you can see here, we have this number through three, three digits or three numbers, zero, two, four. We read that as 24. The second group of three is nine, zero, zero. We read that as 900. The third group of three is 005. We just read it as 5. The next group of three, 070, we just read it as 70. And the last group of three, we only have two numbers actually, we read it as 10. So the numbers can only be in the hundreds or in tens or even single numbers. Okay? When I say hundreds, I mean. Uh, each group of three will be less than 1,000. So maximum 999 would be 999. Okay? So 10, 75, 924. That's the first point. Okay, the second point is about the commas. Okay, so you must understand what the comma or the space means in English. Okay, so the first one means thousand. The second one means million. The third one means billion. Now, we don't usually go higher than that, but recently the United States budget is in the trillions. Here in Japan, we use Japanese yen, which is often uh, in the trillions. So the next comma is trillion. Okay. So basically, these four words are all you need to know. More than a trillion is a little unusual, and I'm not going to talk about that today. So we have 
thousand, million, billion, trillion. So how do we read this number? Groups of three and commas. Here we go. Ready? Ten trillion seventy billion five million nine hundred thousand and twenty-four. One more time. Ten trillion. Read it at home also. Read it along with me. Ten trillion seventy billion five million nine hundred thousand and twenty-four. One more time. Read it at home. Ten trillion seventy billion five million nine hundred thousand and twenty-four. Let's look at some more examples. We'll start easy and then we'll get a little bit harder. Okay. Number one. So groups of three numbers are only hundreds. The first one, how do we read that? That's 101. 101. Repeat it at home. 101. Second one. How do we read this one? 997. 997. Okay, now we're going to get our first comma, and the first comma is thousand. Therefore, this looks difficult because of the zeros, but the group of three numbers, we read it as five. This is five. It doesn't matter if it's here or if it's here or here or here. Wherever it is, it's always five. How do we read it? One thousand and five. Next one. Looks the same, but the number is here, which means this number is 50. It's 50. This group of three numbers is 50. How do we read it? 1050. 1050. Okay, let's move to the next one. We read this one as 1500. You can see the 500 there. 1,500. So one more time. This one, 1,005. This one, 1,050. And this one, 1,500. Let's get a little more difficult. Here we are. How do we read that? We read it as 505. And we read that as 10. What's the first comma? First comma is 1,000. So we have 10,505. One more time. Read it at home. 10,505. Okay, the next one. Very similar. 10,055. 10,055. Okay, let's move on to the right side. Okay, here we have one comma. First comma is thousand. This is 37,195. Read it at home with me. 37,195. Next one. Okay, what's the number on the left side? It's 408. The comma is thousand, therefore 408,001. Just one. You can see it's only one. One more time. Read it with me. 408,001. Next one. Getting bigger. We've got first comma is a thousand. Second comma is million. So we have 17 million five hundred thousand and one. Read it with me. 17 million five hundred thousand and one. Okay. Next one. Now we're getting really big. We've got thousands, millions, billions. Therefore, this is 400 billion, 500 million. Finish. Finish. If we change it a little bit, let's make this uh, 200. Let's make this 8. And let's make this uh, 5. Then we get. 400 billion, 500 million, 200,000, 805. So you must understand how to read in hundreds, groups of three, 
each group of three, and you need to understand what each comma means. Okay, so now with that information, you should be able to read any English number. We've done this, let's move on to some unusual numbers. We're going to work with three and one and five only. Uh, on the left side, we have three numbers. We have three and a decimal point and the one and the five. Now many students, especially here in Japan, will read it as 3.15. 3.15. That's wrong. We can't say 3.15. After the point, we must read each number. So we read it as 3.15. 3.15. If there were more numbers, for example, after the point, we had 15057, that's how we read it, 3.15057. Okay, so after the decimal point, we read each number by itself. The second one is a price. Now, here in Japan, a lot of students will say $3.15, $3.15, which is wrong. I don't know about in your country uh, how you would read that, but it should be three, uh, let's start again. It should be three dollars, and 15 cents. Three dollars and 15 cents. Three dollars and 15 cents. Okay, three dollars and 15 cents. Now, if we were in the UK, they would use pounds. So, how do we read it in pounds? Three pounds and 15, not cents, 15 pence. Three pounds and fifteen pence. That's why in the UK you sometimes see a P after this part. That means P for pence. Okay, now if you're using euro it's a little different. You can say three euro fifteen cents, you have euro cents, but in my experience, when I was in Europe, uh, people would say 3.2 euro, 2.7 euro, 3.15 euro. So it seems like in when you're using euro, it's okay to say 3 point something euro. But in America, in English, most English speaking countries which are using dollars, it's three dollars and 15 cents. Okay, let's look at the next one. So this is a time. Um, there are two ways to read the time in English. If you would like to learn those ways, please check out my lesson on telling the time in English. I'll put the link to that video in the description below. So the first way we can read it is just 315. It's 3.15 p.m. But the second way to read it is to say it is quarter It's quarter past three. Okay, 3.15, quarter past three. 3.15, $3.15, 3.15 p.m. Let's move over to the other side. Okay, now this symbol here, we read it as percent. So this number, 3.15%. 3.15%. Okay, KM, you guys probably already know, represents kilometer, therefore, we read it as 3.15 kilometers. Okay, the next one. 3.15, hmm, 
What is this? Uh, a lot of students are not sure how to read this. We read this as square meters. Square meters or square kilometers. So we read it as 3.15 square meters. Okay, if you're in America, they probably use feet, so it would be 3.15 square feet. Okay, the last two are for measuring temperature. We have three and then a little circle and then a C, or if you're in America, you might have an F. Let's have a look. First of all, the little circle is degrees. So it's three degrees. It's three degrees. The C and the F represent the scale, and in Western countries we often say Celsius. Or centigrade. So it's three degrees Celsius. In America, they have a different system, and they will say degrees Fahrenheit. So it's three degrees Fahrenheit. If we had a decimal point, for example, 3.15, then it would be 3.15 degrees Celsius. So you can see that in all of these situations, when we, we just read it as a decimal point, like in the first case, 3.15, 3.15%, 3.15 kilometers, 3.15 square meters, 3.15 degrees Celsius. Now, if there are any other numbers you'd like to know how to read, just ask me in the comments section below the video. Okay, so let's move on to part three of our lesson, which is a little quiz, a little numbers quiz. Okay, so if you have a piece of paper, please write down the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to read 12 numbers to you. So there are 12 numbers in this quiz. So when I read the number, I want you to write down the number at home and then we'll check it together. Now I'm going to read each number two times, okay? I'll read each number two times and please write down the number that you hear. Now the first one is very easy. Number one, 374. 374. Okay, number two. 7,495. One more time. 7,495. Okay, number three. 107,409. Again, 107,409. Number four. Now be careful, it's very similar to number three. Number four, 170,409. One more time. 170,409. Okay, number five. Number five is a little bit big, big number. Okay, number five. 82,500,000. 82, 82, Got it? Okay, number six. 104,700,400. 104, okay, 
one more time. 104,700,400. Okay, number seven. Number seven. 282,577. One more time. 282,577. Okay, number eight. Now these are going to be smaller numbers like times or temperatures or measurements, okay? Number eight, 15.5%. One more time, 15.5%. Okay, number nine, 37 square kilometers. 37 square kilometers. Okay, number 10. Five dollars and ninety-five cents. Five dollars and ninety-five cents. Number eleven. Four point seven meters. One more time. Four point seven meters. The last one, I hope you're doing well. Okay, the last one. 28 degrees Celsius. One more time. 28 degrees Celsius. Now, before we check them, I'm going to read each one one more time, okay? If you want to skip to the answer, skip to the answer. Number one. 374. Number 2. 7,495. Number 3. 107,409. Number 4. 170,409. Number 5. 82,500,000. Number six, 104,700,400. Number seven, 282,577. Number eight, 15.5%. Number nine, 37 square kilometers. Number 10, Five dollars and ninety-five cents. Number eleven, four point seven meters. And the last one, number twelve, twenty-eight degrees Celsius. Let's check. Let's see how many you got right. Number one was three hundred seventy-four. Number two. 7,495. Number three and number four were very similar. I was trying to trick you, sorry about that. The first one was 107,409. Okay, number four, 170,409. Number five, 82 million Five, whoops, 500,000. Number six, 104,700,400. Number seven, 282,577. Okay, number eight, 15.5%.
Number 9. 37 square kilometers. Number 10 was a price $5.95. Number 11, 4.7 meters. And number 12, 28 degrees Celsius. Okay. So those are the answers. Check them with your answers. Let me know in the comment section how many you got right. I hope you got them all right. So let's finish off today's lesson with some numbers idioms. I've put five idioms on the board and I'll go through them and I'll explain them. But first, I want to talk about this. So you probably have seen this on social media and it's called hashtag, hashtag something, hashtag blah, blah, blah. Um, but it also, we also read it as meaning number. So we would say, for example, number one, number two. Sometimes people will put in O dot for number three, number four, number five. Uh, so you might see this or you might see this and it just means number. Okay, now let's have a look at some idioms. The first one is very easy. You probably hear it a lot, especially uh, in a you know business meeting or in the company or at your job. Okay, it's take five, take five. Uh, it just means to take a break and it, we might say, uh, for example, okay everyone, let's take five. And let's take five means let's take a short break, a five minute break. So let's take five. Okay, it's an easy one, you can use that. Okay, the next one is a nine to five job. Now the two is not a number, it's T-O-2, nine to five, as in nine to five. So a nine to five job. An example, I'm tired of working a nine to five job. I want a different job. So it tends to be a little negative sounding because a nine to five job is just a routine job where you're working from 9 a.m. in the morning to 5 p.m. at night. Uh, typically it was a kind of office job because a lot of um, factory work or other types of work uh, had shift work uh, with various hours. But a nine to five job was typical office hours. And sometimes some office jobs can be very routine and you have to repeat the same task again and again. And maybe it gets boring or tiring. The next one, this is a one. That means one for the road. It's very common. You'll sometimes hear it at a party or in a bar. Just before people are leaving, they say, okay, uh, one more for the road. Let's have one for the road. Shall we have one for the road? One means one more drink, one more beer, one more glass of wine. Now, of course, don't do that if you're going to be driving. You shouldn't be having any for the road. So, but if you want to say just before leaving on a journey um, or traveling or going home, uh, you want to have one more, say, hey, let's have one for the road. Okay. The next one says to be in two minds about something. To be in two minds about something. So this means you are undecided about something. Maybe half you want to do some this and the other half you want to do that. So for example, uh, I'm in two minds about taking the new job. Maybe the new job has a higher salary, more money, but there is more responsibility or you have to travel a lot, or you have to work a lot of overtime late at night. So there's some benefit, but also some negative point. So it may be hard to decide, or you might be a little confused about what you should do. So you could say, oh, I'm in two minds about taking the new job. Hmm, I'm in two minds about moving to Osaka. I'm in two minds about studying English overseas. Okay, the last one is to kill two birds with one stone. Okay, uh, maybe you've heard it before. Uh, I know there's a similar idiom in other languages. To kill two birds with one stone means to use your time efficiently, not wasting time, to do things more efficiently, um, to save time. And people are very busy, so they want to save time. Okay, so uh, 
For example, I usually take my dog for a walk when I go to the store, to the supermarket. I can kill two birds with one stone. So in this case, there are two tasks or two, two jobs to do. One, go to the supermarket, buy some food for dinner. Two, take my dog for a walk. But if I do them both at the same time, so I take my dog and walk to the supermarket instead of, for example, driving to the supermarket, then I can kill two birds with one stone. So uh, that's how we use that one. Okay, so five numbers idioms. Today, our goal was to read and understand numbers in English. I hope your numbers have improved. Reading and speaking should be easy now, but listening will still be difficult. You need to listen to practice. We covered large numbers. We covered some unusual numbers like decimal points and prices and time. Thank you very much for joining me for today's lesson. I hope you're much more confident about numbers. Please hit the like button and please share this with all your friends and your classmates and your family to help them learn and understand English numbers too. I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye.